Hi, everybody. Welcome to Fight Net Radio. Lee Hunter, Andrew Labashe, bringing you the wonderful world of boxing. Hope you guys enjoy this video with a face of me. It's a test. <laughs> We're doing the news. We're cleaning up the week. My name's Lee Hanish. My job is to be the asshole. On the other end of the line is the star of the show and our boxing analyst and expert and complete boxing writer, Andrew Labashe. How are you today, Andrew Labashe? Nah, doing good. How you doing at hour number four of recording this evening? <laughs> Still doing We're testing good. stuff. For those of you who have like watched these videos in order, yeah, it's all the same day. We're just shooting them all. I'm trying to pretend like they're different videos because who the hell knows who's watching what. We're just expanding the Fight Net Radio universe. Go to fightnetradio.com if you're watching this video. Click on uh, Facebook, like us, follow us. Uh, we're also on YouTube. Also, you can listen to our podcast. There are multiple ways to listen to the show. Check us out. We do a weekly podcast show we do it every sunday we do a bonus show during the week it's really good you can listen to it in your car on the way to work i'm just saying uh we are sponsored uh, this episode by las vegas discount.net we've got a fight coming up in vegas in about a week go to las vegas discount.net uh and uh click on search hotels for the 14th through the 16th because tyson fury is next week you'll need a room you will need a room and uh, you can stay and save uh, up to 50% at lasvegasdiscount.net. We try to figure out each and every week the cheapest place and closest place that you can stay for that fight. This week, I am picking... Hmm, Andrew, it's looking thin. I was kind of hoping the prices would go down a little bit, although I do like this deal. Yeah, 50% off. Go stay at the win. Go stay at the win. Fucking take a chick. Don't go by yourself if you're a dude. Don't be stupid. The win is not exciting for a guy by himself. Take a chick. Big screen. Nice room. Good view. 200 bucks a night at the win, Andrew. That's a good deal. That's a really good deal for that weekend. Go stay there. Don't spend 136 and stay at the Tropicana. Screw that. Go to the win. Go to the club. Take a girl. If you're an old man like me, take somebody half your age. They will be very impressed by the win. I am just here to get you guys laid. We are here to talk about boxing news. That's correct. We're here to talk about news and news of this past week. We'll start right off with uh, Tyson Fury. This past week, Ring Magazine released their top 10 pound for pound list uh, of heavyweights and their rankings. And Tyson Fury made it to the top of the list. If you're a regular of Fight Net Radio, you will know that Andrew and I actually broke this down and figured this list out before them. And this list looks oddly like the list we broke down, Andrew. I'm not saying that anybody over at Ring Magazine is <laughs> listening to Fight Net Radio. Uh, however, this week in a chat room, Kelly King, while on another show, said, they're using your stuff line for line. I said, the only person that makes crazy is Andrew. Doesn't make me crazy. I already know who listened to the show, right? It's basically people who listen to the podcast are Andrew's family and friends. Um, and then everybody who writes a blog or does a podcast. That is our core audience. It's true. You know I'm right. You know I'm right. We don't have casual fans. The casual fans we have are the ones in the chat room. Everybody they else is boobies. a boxing writer. <laughs> they want to see boobies. So, they don't have any, yeah, right. And Deontay Wilder. Lap, lap Deontay dances. is a regular listener. Lap, lap dances so, bring our fans out. <laughs> so true. Uh, so the list, as it stands, number one, Tyson Fury. Number two, Deontay Wilder. Number three, Andy Ruiz Jr. Number four, Anthony Joshua. Andrew, last week we talked about this after the fight. We agree on the top four, correct? No. As it stands right now. <laughs> Hell no. What, you're still not giving Deontay number two position? Nah, we talked yeah, about it before the show. Listen, he, Andy Ruiz has done more than Deontay Wilder already. Yes, he has. Don't you tell me no. Yes, he has. He has three titles, and he beat well, the guy who was ranked. And he beat the guy who was ranked number one. How the fuck do you get number three? <laughs> <laughs> what, where does that math come in? All right, I'm going to explain it to everybody. <sighs> I think Oscar. Hey. 
Hey. Yeah, yeah. You said my name, eh? I know. I think you're helping the WBC out there. I think you're, you're trying to give them a little bit of credibility oh, no. with that, oh, that no. bogus get scorecard. It, get, it, get it right, eh? I'm helping out PBC. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I why, mean, would, why would you want to help out the PBC? All right, all right, all right. Look, Andrew, because I got really drunk last week. Oh, shit. Right? Okay, I'm still drunk. Notice I'm doing the do you eyes think that's what, now too. Hey, you know, do you think that's what they're doing? They're sending someone hey. to the bar to give Oscar some shit. Hey, 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 listen, 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 listen. So last week while I was really fucked up, I put in a bid on the PBC. We're going to call it the BBCCC. <laughs> or the CCBB. I don't know. Maybe the OSCBBC. O. C. In the PBC. Anyway, it's a it's How a. How do you feel it. about the OPP oh, yeah, in yeah, the yeah. PBC? That's... I'm buying it, bro. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. You better be down with OPP in the PBC. That's a lot of letters. I'm really fucked up. Uh, yeah, yeah. Really fucked up. Six weeks, Andrew. I've been here a long time. They're locking me up, eh? I'm a little worried. Maybe you should come get me out. Come to the Tyson Fury fight and get me out of this room. There's too many people that feel Deontay Wilder won last Saturday. And that's just not the case here. Andy Ruiz is the second best heavyweight right now in the world. Um, he's got three belts and he beat the number one fighter, Anthony Joshua. And he not even just beat him, Lee. He knocked him out. Four knockdowns to be exact. All right. So you can say what you want about Mr. Wilder's two punches on Tyson Fury in that 12 round fight. Andy Ruiz beat the shit out of his guy. Um, nah, they, you know, so I would just swap them. Everything else looks good. I'm going to tell you something else. Deontay needs to get worried that Dillian White don't start pressing him now for as much long as he's been ducking that man. When does that start playing an effect? I, mean, I swear, if you look up Dillian White's record, he has, what, three um, mandatories he beat or eliminators? Those are all top ten WBC guys. The silver eliminator gold heavyweight <laughs> superstar international champion I, I don't know if joshua's better i think than he's Gillian in line White. to fight canelo alvarez i think yeah I, I, you know it's it's hard saying joshua's top four still it really is and not saying he should drop off the top 10 um but being dropped four times and knocked out and quitting and you're still ranked the fourth best heavyweight in the world i don't know you gotta you need to get do a little bit more to, to get up there in the rankings than uh just waking you feel up. Like Oscar day. wrote this list while he was drunk in the hotel room. <laughs> Man, Luis, Luis Ortiz. Luis Ortiz is number six. Yeah. Really? Fuck. Yeah. Why not? Really? <laughs> why not? <laughs> fuck it. I, think I he like him. Off. Yeah, he went I off like of the records. fat guy. I the think, fat guy on the list. <laughs> I think he went off of records and not really what's been going on <laughs> in the fighter's career. He's like, they're both undefeated, so fight one, two, undefeated. Yeah, can't right, get, right. Can't get that wrong. <laughs> Do we have any heavyweights? Let's put them on the list. We don't have any heavyweights. How come we don't have Ruiz? I just would love to see Oscar be like this crazy fucking belligerent. Like, he's writing the blogs and sending them to Doug Fisher. Fix it. Bah. I, I would almost put Dillian White because he's been done so wrong at number four. I'm putting I, I would go Fury, Ruiz, Wilder, White, Joshua, and then whatever else you want guys want to do, you can do. But that would be that would be you want to do fight nets rankings. I I, I don't see how how uh, Joshua is even ranked above Dillian White right now. I know he he has beaten Dillian White. But we're talking about today, the present. We're not talking about three years ago. Um, but Andrew, that punch, you could hear it all the way in Brazil. Say it. Brazil. Oh, shit. 
Mamma Mia! Oh, I fucking hate that. <laughs> I fucking hate that guy. Is it more fun with me doing the video just to, just to irritate you while I'm making the faces? Yeah, I don't know if I'm pissing you off or not now. Yeah, you're always doing shit like that. I'm like, oh, do I stop talking? What do I do? <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Teddy Atlas is getting in the boxing International Boxing Hall of Fame as a broadcaster. The most belligerent man in sports, Dan Rayfield, wrote an article. I feel like I feel like Dan Rayfield should be like Jabba the Hutt. Teddy Atlas, when we float. Teddy Atlas has two distinctions in his career. He is a successful trainer having served as an apprentice to the late great Customato uh, before working numerous top boxers, including crowning moment when he guided Michael Moore to the heavyweight championship in his upset over Evander Holyfield. Atlas also, by the way, and he also guided him in his greatest loss. (laughs) Should I point that shit out too? You're leaving that part out, Dan. No, I'm not. You gave me a cheeseburger to leave it out of the article. The video's not good. I'm I'm way over the top, Andrew. Um, Atlas also trained Mike Tyson as an amateur, as well as professionals such as Benitez, Briggs, Brown, Gamachi, Lalon. Why would you add Donnie Lalon like that's a big name? Uh, McGinnian, uh, Tracy Patterson, Timothy Bradley Jr. Uh, currently, 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 Atlas trains light heavyweight champion Alexander Gavinsky. Uh, not Alexander Yusk, just to get that straight. Atlas's other career in boxing has been as a popular broadcaster. Popular? It gave me a cheeseburger. Read it! <laughs> For those of you who don't know, Dan is very large. <laughs> and a coupon to the buffet. We have a new character. It is rising. I shouldn't have spent, you know how much I spent for this one, Andrew? I spent real money on this one. Uh, Atlas's other career is as a broadcaster for ESPN, where he has said some of the most unbelievable and incoherent shit in boxing history. And because of that, has he not? Tell me I'm wrong. Yeah, he's never been shy to say fights are fixed, judges are corrupt. <laughs> like right, right while he's standing <laughs> over him. This fucking judge, I swear to God. <laughs> Oh, uh, Andrew! <laughs> yeah. This year's Hall of Fame inductee, former welterweight champ, junior middleweight champ. He's uh, like literally Fame. said, you shouldn't even watch ESPN fights while he's working for ESPN. <laughs> when you get scores like this, we shouldn't even be watching. You know his bosses are like, what is he doing? Pull the plug. Pull the plug. <laughs> I'm not saying I punch trunk. I'm just saying that I'm a little crazy. Yeah, why are you watching me? This is fucking fucking bullshit. Scar on his face and that weird look like he's got, like, he's got... Swear to God, I would have shot Mike Tyson that day. Does he have Bell's palsy or something? Like, half of his face doesn't move? Atlas 62 of Staten Island, New York, said he plans to enjoy the weekend in Canastona with his family, wife, Elena. Wow, I didn't know that... uh, How many times do you think he's told the Tyson story? the third... Daughter Nicole and two grandsons. It will be. A hey, he's got a Raider day. too. He's a Raider. His son's a is Raider. He... Plays for the Raiders. Yeah, Teddy Atlas is always in Oakland. I don't oh. know if he still is, but yeah, in the past years, uh, Teddy Atlas was always coming to the Raider games. All right. So, in your mind, does Teddy Atlas make it in as a broadcaster? Of course, because people talk about him. He brought light to the sport, right? Hey, listen, a lot of casuals agree with everything. Right, he says. and he has cheeseburgers, Andrew. That's correct. But seriously, a lot of casuals think just like him. I think that's why he used to say those type of things. You know, he gets a lot of uh, responses on his his little social media feed about how right he is from all the people that go run with the conspiracy theories that the mob still runs boxing and it's all corrupt. And every once in a while, yes, you do get a scorecard of, you know, 10 to 2 and some guy has it eight rounds to the other guy. So what the fuck are you going to do? He's in. He does get in. What I want to know is how many times do you think he said the Tyson story at the bar? His neighborhood He's bar. He's told it to me a bunch of times, but he feeds me when it happens. 
biggest moment of his life was telling Mike Tyson he'd kill him and Mike Tyson not doing a damn thing. Now, there was rumor to be a gun involved in that incident. There's always a gun in that story for some reason. Well, you can't really tell that to Mike without there being one, right? <laughs> yeah. Hey, Andy, what are we going to do with Andy? What are we going to do with Oh, How big you Andy think he is what today? What do we got? Uh, CNN, Anthony Joshua has denied claims he suffered a panic attack uh, ahead of his uh, defeat to Andy Ruiz Jr. This coming to us from CNN International. Uh, in a video posted on, on the Heavyweight Boxers YouTube channel, who knew he had one? Uh, Joshua, wow, they actually read their stuff at CNN. This is well written. Anthony Joshua also denied that he had experienced food poisoning. Instead, accepting yeah, responsibility us. for his loss, Andrew. <laughs> food poisoning Thank at God. the Italian restaurant. I told you. I told you. <laughs> Joshua entered the fight at Madison Square Garden, a heavy favorite, but Sam, to his hey, first you better give a shout out to Sam. Fights. You better give a shout out to he interviewed MT, uh, MTK and asked him if he thought they, that Anthony Joshua was eating with some Italians at the restaurants. You didn't hear about that? No. Yeah, he came on our he came on our Facebook chat room and said he was interviewing a, a big timer from the MTK uh, promotions and he was going to ask him about the Italians. Uh, uh, oh, Sam. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sam. Yeah. Sam gonna, yes, yeah, sir. Shout out to Sam. What's the name nice. of the Sam show? <laughs> nice, Sam. You made CNN. Anthony Joshua talked about it. No, I did not get poisoned. <laughs> Uh, oh, it was shit. an amazing night, an amazing night altogether. Why oh, would you say God. it twice, Joshua? Because he made a lot room, of money. I was on in a mixed changing room space. I warmed up really well. I had no panic attack. I'm not that type of person. You know me. And that's why I say, and I'm going to keep on saying, that I have to take my loss like a man. No blaming anyone. No blaming anything. I'm the only one who went in there to perform, and performance didn't go as Man. Andrew, what do you think of the high road out of Anthony Joshua? Uh, he has to take the high road. If you tell people you had a panic attack, you'll never again be a headliner in the sport. No one will bet on you. No one will watch you. Um, no, it's over. Nobody likes the guy who can't breathe before a big fight. Sorry. There's a thing in boxing you need to be able to breathe. You need to be able to keep your mental game intact. Uh, you're, you're telling me you're flipping out before fights. It's a, it's a it's a career uh, changer right there. I, I think the fight already was, Lee. I really do. I don't see people uh, coming back to Anthony Joshua like they once did. Not they losing did to a guy. Lewis. They did for Klitschko. No, they no, no, no. But fight. those guys were a lot better. Those guys, Hasim Rockman was way better than than Andy Ruiz. 33 to 1? I could have swore that was the biggest uh, underdog since Buster Douglas, they said, Lee. So all those other guys were better. Sorry. Um, Andy Ruiz. Once again, it looks like a man that doesn't belong in the heavyweight division. As a matter of fact, you name me a heavyweight champ that looks like Andy Ruiz. I'll wait. In all of the history, even Big George. And you want and you know you guys that keep throwing George Foreman out there. Does anyone realize Foreman was 52 years old when he looked the way he did? What what did George look like, Lee, when he fought Ali? When he fought Frazier, when he fought Norton. He, he looked like he was he look like a, Yeah. Did he look like he weighed 268 fucking pounds? Did he look like he, no. did he stand on a podium and say, I want to eat Snickers? No, you know who he looked like? Uh, Luis Ortiz. Luis Ortiz looks like he's 200. Exactly, yeah, exactly. But not, not what we seen win the heavyweight title last Saturday. So I'm not hating either. I'm just, I'm trying to be real. That was not supposed to happen. Teddy Atlas hit it on the, the head. It set us back. Heavyweight fighters are not training as hard. I don't give a damn what you say. I don't care. When you look like that, you cannot tell me you put it all in the gym. Because you're putting it all in your plate, too. <laughs> if you're working out. Hey. Oh, we, what? Hey. Hey. <sighs> you like my fighter? Why do you keep calling him your... I, He's, He's my fighter, eh? Yeah, I know. You're you're confusing people, though. You know that had carried no. on too. I I literally seen that in a chat room. He's Someone from saying, Mexico, bro. <laughs> I literally seen that. You need to stop saying he's the this guy. 
<laughs> gonna get it to trend if it kills you. You know, you know, I've seen it in the chat room. I'm like, oh, I just shake my head. Whatever. Shout out to Kelly he's King. From, just so you want to know, yes, people listen to the show and the writers listen to the show, and they believe. And you know, there's the also a rumor. Uh, everything about this rematch is, has been asked backwards. The fifty okay, million dollars. So let's dollars. talk about the rematch. Uh, All right. It spread like wildfire this week. Uh, my favorite was Andy Ruiz won't go to England unless he gets fifty million dollars. That's kind of my current crazy favorite thing that he said. Yeah, he made uh, four million. Hearn, yeah, right. Uh, Eddie Hearn said after meetings with AJ Rob uh, and the management team in New York which is where he stayed for a long time. They weren't going to let him leave New York until... So the rumor was DAZN wants the fight in New York. We covered this, like, last week as well, I believe. But um, this has been going on for a while, right? So they basically tied AJ up in a room with Eddie Hearn, Andy Ruiz, and the DAZN people, and DAZN wants the fight in New York. Eddie and AJ want it in... Uh, back in England, right? And so this has been going on for the better part of the week. I don't think, to my knowledge, AJ has not returned to the United Kingdom yet, has he? I No, I have not seen that. He has been posting a lot in New York still. And from what I, I, I understand, it's Anthony Joshua is asking to return to New York for this fight. He does not want to take it to... Uh, of the UK. Now, this is what he's saying to the media. We don't know what they're saying behind closed doors, right? Because if with Dillian White's rumors are true, we know they're going back to the UK for the fight, okay? Um, well, from but what I saying, understand, AJ wants the UK. Eddie Hearn doesn't give a flying fuck as long as he makes another $100 million. Um, Andy Ruiz, I think, wants it in El Centro. Uh, he has. I think Andy Ruiz is just, show me the paycheck. I exactly. He's making $15 million. Andy Ruiz is going to make $15 million in the rematch. It's already on paper, um, and it's supposed to be in the U.K. It's what – listen, Lee, you guys, it's whatever Eddie Hearn and Joshua want. Th this fight was so far pushed in Joshua's favor, Al Heyman didn't even ask for the options on the rematch. He signed them off. So Al Heyman's got – Al Heyman basically let his guy make $4 bucks that day. That's what Al did. Al said, you're going to go there. You're probably going to lose. Beat, yeah, you're you going to make four. Is That's right. You're going to get paid. You come back and we'll be cool. No, I don't need no options. We don't need to do no bidding, nothing like that. Boom, his guy wins. Now he's fucked. So do you think the Steven Espinosa calculator has been pulled out over at Camp Heyman? It, it can't. It's on contract already. He has no options on the rematch. The rematch is signed and delivered for $15 million, and, it, and he's going to the UK. Now... If Joshua says no, right, Joshua can do whatever he wants. It's his fight. That's what they right. signed for. When you sign the no option, it's exactly what it means, people. But $15 million. Lee, this guy was making under a million bucks a year ago. Now he made $4 million, and now he made fifteen. People, remember when I told you, fight the best that you can right away, because when it rains, it pours, right, Lee? He went from $4 million to $15 million guaranteed. And what do you think happens? He drops his ass again. Oh, yeah. No, this he's turns making, into between two fights Deontay. with, okay, let's be realistic, right? So I did math on this the other day. So between this fight and the next fight, plus he's going to get sponsors now, right? Multi-million dollar sponsors. Already, yeah, Snickers is already. Guaranteed. He's yes. getting if he's smart, he wants to go do wings and things. Like, he should do all fat things. Like, he should go do big and tall stores, DXL. Like, he should do, like, Walmart ads, for God's sakes. Like, he should do everything. Like, he should get somebody in New York to literally before, book him for everything. Before he right? does everything, though, Lee, can I say something? He's, I don't know if anyone's been following Andy Ruiz's rise to fame, but did you see his Instagram tag how it says the destroyer 13 did you did okay. you have you caught that oh, your your mx hey listen your... to me listen to me this kid's a millionaire now correct he's a yes. millionaire you want so to really affiliate MS yourself 13. yeah you really want to or ms13 mm whatever mexican mafia whatever you want to put that they need to take that shit off of that kid's tag like right away 
unless he's married to that cause, unless he's affiliated, he's a member, Lee, they're going to tax his ass for doing that. You don't think the inside is going to send some people to go, hey, you like using our, our brand? Because that's what it is. When Andy Ruiz, when everyone starts saying he was the yeah, cholo, man. when he's the cholo from, from uh, Imperia, California, did you see how everyone, George Lopez, Kimball, oh, he's the cholo, the cholo. And then you have 13 at the end of your tag? Dude, it's not a good move. I don't know why his his team hasn't told him to remove that, though, but he needs to, and he needs, needs to do it before he starts signing all of these endorsements. Um. I think he should get the face tattoo like these guys. I think you go all the way with it, man. <laughs> if That's if you're married, it, hey, if you're affiliated, go for it because they're coming. They're coming. They, they don't allow you to use their brand without being taxed. I'm sorry. I don't know why his people don't see that, but they do that. That number was on Jimmy Kimball. That number was on Snickers. They had that on the, on the Snickers Facebook page. They gave a shout out to him. Very stupid. Very stupid. It's, they need to change that fast. And I would do it before you start making this big heavyweight money. This isn't 1998. You're not from America fucking me. You're the heavyweight champion of the world. Act like it. Seriously. MS13 Andy. <laughs> You're so stupid. You know, maybe it means a, a lucky number for him. I don't know. But, but he, it, you know, when you're calling yourself a cholo and you're letting people say you're the cholo, I don't think you really want to be affiliated with that number, man. Seriously. Everyone who thinks I'm not Mexican is wrong. Yeah, and let me tell you, hey, Lee, where's your story about Mexico giving him a parade? Where's your story about Mexico putting him on their uh, Jimmy Kimball? Where, where's his Jimmy Kimball interview over there in Mexico? Because right now, all I seen was Andy on Jimmy Kimball, and that ain't too Mexican to me. Hey, hey, what did I tell you? He's my fighter. He's American. That boy's Mexican American. I don't give a damn what he says. He could be confused all he wants. Shut that up, boy was. Andrew. Nah, you shut up. That boy's Mexican American, baby. He's down. He's with down. Oscar. Yeah, what? He's down with the Oscar and the MS-13, bro. <laughs> and real Mexicans don't like that shit either. To be honest with you, Lee. They're, they're, Everyone they're... Who thinks I'm not Mexican simply because I was born in the United States is wrong. <laughs> <laughs> what? That's what this we live in today. Hey, Lee. By the way, this is the best sentence ever. <laughs> That's the title of the show. That's the <laughs> that is the title of this show. That's right. That's, That's the right. title of this video. Everyone who thinks I'm not Mexican simply because I was born in the United States is wrong. What? Bro. <laughs> yeah, eh? What he said. And he's with me. I represent Mexico trying to go to the Olympics. I'm always fighting for the Imperial Valley. What? Dude, it's in California. It's in California, not Mexico. <laughs> You failed geography. You hey. failed geography. Okay, hold on. Andy, if you were watching this video, here's maps. Here's maps. On Google. Okay. Imperial. You don't even have to spell it correctly. It'll right. auto correct for you, bro. Just type in Imperial California, then zoom out. There's El Centro. That's where you go to the movie theater, right? Because they don't have one in Imperial. You have to go to El Centro. I think they even have an IMAX. There you go. I'll zoom a little further. See the big line there, bro? That line right there? See the line? I'll do it again. See the line? That will be the border. You are north of the border. Off the 8 freeway. I'm just I'm just wondering when, when they're going to do the parade for him. Because they made history, right? Lee, did they not make history? Is it not the first Mexican heavy? How a hey, boxing is like soccer over there, right? That's what they always tell us, correct? When's the parade? Hey, Andy, you need to announce when your parade is for your country. They have an IMAX down there? Oh, Maybe I'll move down there. Do they have an IMAX? They got one in Mexico. They don't even have an IMAX in El Centro. The IMAX is in Mexicali, bro. How fucking crazy is that? 
Sol del Nino Theater. I got to go to Mexico to go to IMAX. I can't even do that in El Centro. What a shithole you live in. Bro, first thing you should do with that money, move out. <laughs> move. Hey, you're, t- you're saying he's going to move up north or down south? Which way, Lee? Which way is he going? <laughs> I don't know. You could be a bazillionaire in Mexicali, man. Yeah, and also get taxed. <laughs> yeah, it's true. He could go over to TJ or Takati. Oh, TJ. He's nice. I like. I Takati believe there a was a report the other day. Tijuana has had a thousand murders this year already. One thousand murders, Lee. That's not a good report. I'm. I'm glad That's I'd be on the other side of that line. Man, I'd be grateful to be on the other side of that line. Hmm. I, I know. I, I know. I go too hard. I know. I'm sorry. Let hey. We hey, can claim hey, whatever hey. we want. You want to be a different nationality? Listen, my not? mom and dad are from Mexicali, and I feel more Mexican than others who were born in Mexico <laughs> because I fought for my race in from Mexico. Dude, hey. this is the most ignorant shit ever said by a human. <laughs> if you're Mexican and you listen to this show, and I have friends who are Mexican, really oh, they, Mexican. They don't. Oh, really? See, I hate when you say that. Really Mexican? Whatever. Well, he's really Mexican, bro. I know, I know. There's hey Lee. Let me tell you guys something. Let Let's remember. You remember when Juan Diaz, Baby Bull, fought Juan Manuel Marquez? First thing Marquez said was, "Hey, Baby Dude, Baby Diaz is good. He's a good fighter, but he ain't a real Mexican." We all know real Mexicans come from where? Mexico. No, none, none of them give a damn about anyone born up north. Sorry, like I said, hey Andy. Hey, I'm waiting for your fucking parade, bro. When are you going to announce? You better get Al Heyman to call the whole, uh, Suleiman, get some fucking, get, get a this band. This is a fucking crazy get, paragraph, man. Get a mariachi it's band. Really, I can't even stress this, 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 this. I know. I Everyone know. who thinks I'm not Mexican because I wasn't born in Mexico. No, simply because um, he was born in the United States. They're no, getting right. <laughs> Hey, you can't tell a person, hey, listen, you're a boy. You're born a boy. You're a boy. You can't say that nowadays. So, damn it, Lee, you cannot say that he can't Andrew, say. We're going to have to get 23 and me's. We're going to. Didn't you do your 23 and me? Yes. Yes. Okay. Pick a country. Oh, Pick I know. I know. I, I fucking had 1% the whole world in me. Okay. I'm well, even part... Pick one. Pick one. Oh yeah, well I'm not. I'm from Nigeria, so I would rather I would be black. I want to be black. I'm Nigerian. What's up? (laughs) There's so many jokes I could go with at this moment, and I just my brain literally shut down on the jokes that I was going to go for. (laughs) For those of you who are first times watching videos with us or listening to our show, my job is when Andrew throws a softball like that. It is my job, and this is just me stalling for a joke. I'm going to go with locker room. Okay, so watch where the comedy goes. Andrew, you and I have uh, shared a locker room. And based on what I've seen in the shower, no. So you're not oh, you're crazy. Cra- oh, you're crazy. You're crazy. No, I'm just playing. Ah, oh, yeah, yeah. I didn't know you were going to go. How did I know you were going to go there with this? A softball. You I know. Me. I know. You're going to toss that out over the plate, okay? <laughs> and I'm Barry Bonds, jacked up to the gill on every chemical on All, the planet. And when you're, I got, tossing, you're lobbing a ball at the plate at me. When I got my results, I looked for the things my mother told me, and I threw everything else out. That's it. That's all I want. And you know what? Fuck your, your 5%, 7%, 8%. You know what? Stop it. Stop. Bang, bang, bang. She knew my dad were out. We're gone. We're done. Sucks for you people that did not get the same results. There's another one in here, right here, people, for those of you who wonder, because I write comedy on the fly, and it's really hard, but when he does my mom and my dad, bang, 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 there you go. That's really low-hanging fruit shit, but I try not to do humor about parents. I try not to. I just don't. Well, what do you because hey. his mom is still not talking to me over a vape incident from three years ago. I told you you're the reason why I smoke weed, Lee. <laughs> wow. 
why not? Why not? <laughs> Everyone who thinks I'm not Mexican simply because I was born in the United States is wrong. I would like to talk to his grandfather. No, actually, I'm going to go full Trump here. Actually, <laughs> I'm going to go for it. I'm going to, I'm going to take, the, I'm going to take the easy, low hanging Trump oh. angle here. All right, if this is true, when are we throwing him out? No, no, no I, hey, you know, I don't know how much more disrespectful the, the the man could have been towards the his country. I really, I'm don't. surprised Trump didn't jump on this. And uh, you're right. Stupid. You're right. I mean, Trump is a great A. I'm sorry if you voted for Trump. Trump is a dick, okay? And says the dickiest shit ever, right? On like, purpose. He says yeah. crazy fucking shit. He says shit like I would say. He goes further than I would. And I say crazy <laughs> shit, okay? I say some crazy shit to get a reaction. He does it on a national level, okay? He likes to... I had this... This is a true story. I had this conversation with my daughter. I said... Do you understand how the news works? She goes, yes. I said, does it look like they're trying to scare people? She goes, yes, that's the way all media looks. I said, who do you think they're trying to scare? She goes, based on what I can tell, uh, white women. I said, you're a very smart girl. My daughter said that. It's all the news true. looks like it's trying to scare white women. I said, yes, that would be my guess too. Um, I'm surprised Trump didn't like retweet this and go, they get the fuck out. Or whatever. I guess you got to move that wall a little lower. Yeah, right. We're going to put it around Mexicali. I, yeah. I don't do a Trump. Super tremendous. Bigly. We're going to build a bigly wall. Everybody in Imperial California thinks that way. Dude, they do live in Mexico in Imperial. Like, I've been to El Centro. I've done evictions there. Ooh, that makes me sound really bad. I'm a former banker. People don't hate. Um, El Centro's a shithole, bro. It's, it doesn't matter. It, it doesn't is, matter. It doesn't matter. It's not the third world country. I'm pretty sure I had to show a passport to get in there. <laughs> You're a dick. <laughs> dick. Big <league. laughs> No. Hey, I haven't seen Imperial California with a thousand murders yet. When I start seeing headlines like that, maybe I'll agree with Andy. The rest of his interview People is beings. fairly normal. I, dude, I can't let this go. I know. No, it was. I don't That's know why crazy. they did it. That is some crazy ass shit, bro. And, and Lee, that I'm is, still waiting. I'm still waiting for the boxing report. It shows me how Mets go flip their shit when this kid won. I'm waiting for it, you guys. Look, you guys like listening to us. We like driving the the news. Give me some. Find me a fucking parade. Hey. Suleiman, hey, you need to make a parade. Hey, hey bro. <laughs> I'm going to have a parade for him. Exactly, man. They they put a lot. I mean, dude, they literally said this. I'm not kid. saying I'm having a parade so that he'll sign with me. Because he's already signed with me, right? Ay, ay, ay. I'm going to have a parade in El Centro. Should cost like 40 bucks. Mm, drive around the city hall or something of Mexico. <laughs> take five minutes. <laughs> five minutes get all the espn to court this hey, i love i love how they were like look at how the mexicans backed them they showed that espn deport this uh, uh studio it's chavez two other broadcasters and his son oh yeah man oh boy did that studio stick around for this guy the oh, fuck come on you guys are... sorry just keeping it real I love this little stat that they had to throw up. Heavyweight title bids by boxers of Mexican descent. Not from Mexico, just Mexican descent, Andrew. Uh, I didn't know Manuel Ramos. Chris Ariola sucked balls every time he's gotten a shot at the title. They all suck said, balls, yeah. Except Andy. Uh, uh, yeah, Eric Molina was a dog and pony show. Can you believe how many fucking chances Chris Ariola's gotten a chance <laughs> at the title? Like it's almost ridiculous. He's the Rocky Who's Warriors Chris of the Ariola heavyweight. Glowing to get all these opportunities. <laughs> He's the Rocky Warriors of the heavyweight division. He is. <laughs> He's got to be forty. Poor I mean, at Rock. this point, <laughs> what, did, what did they do? They put Warriors in with like five champions, six. He never right. wanted. He had that one controversial fight with Barrera. Damn it! He should have been the champ that night, but he's, yeah, zero and five. There you go. 
And you're done. Areola, fuck me. You got a shot at Klitschko? You got a shot at Bermain? You couldn't beat Bermain Stervine, bro. Er, and Areola's you hung up. it up right there. Areola's actually fighting again. Who is he fighting? Yeah, I know. He's got a he's got a shot with an he's fighting a nobody. The no, PBC. no, no, no. I thought it's a name, bro. He's Areola's get Areola. Someone's he's getting. Fed oh no, he's to fighting Kilnaki. He's fighting. There Kilnaki. you go. There you go. Nice. Wait, wait. And as I posted on our website, I'll go to our website right now. There it is. I put this on Facebook. Go to Facebook. Check out Fight Net Radio on Facebook. Can't stress it enough. We have a wonderful. We keep up on all the news. I think I said definitively that this was another yard sale fight, like the loser must and will leave the PBC and boxing type fight. Um, let me scroll down and find this. Yeah, I posted that uh, not too long ago. Uh, they just made the fight within the last couple of days. It's a, it is definitely a yard sale fight for sure, and I'll cover that one because you posted that one as well. Oh, another Jesse Vargas sighting. When are they going to put Jesse on the main show, Andrew? Can I just ask again? Why can't we have Jesse Vargas on the U.S. broadcast over Sergio Mora? Sergio Mora, I know. No, I, I hear you. Sergio's got to go. I'm so tired of – I studied for this fight. What? It's an SAT? I studied. <laughs> I studied it. I knew that. I studied it. Mm. Okay, we'll take, take a English pronunciation class. I think he's got something going with her. They take a lot of photos together. I think he's got a whole milfy thing going here. Good for her, by the way, if he, if she is or he is or however that works, right? I'm not. I'm not even touching that. You go ahead and run with that all day. She's a piece of ass, bro. That's fine. That's cool. They're good friends. She's 45. You, you want to go with that? You don't think he has mommy issues? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Can we start that? By the way, shout out to Mohed Fudal, Fud, I'm butchering your name, bro. Uh, Mojahed makes these videos. These videos are the bombsicle. <laughs> he has nailed all of them. He does these videos and he uses their real audio clips and they're great. <laughs> I can't stress it enough. I tried to get one for us till he quoted his actual price. Um, and then I said, fuck you. Um, <laughs> And I think that's what I said. And I think he said, I'm going to blow up your home. Oh, Maybe. my God. Dude, what a dick. Uh, I'm sorry. So shout out to Fight Posium. Another great cover out of Fight Posium. Yeah, that dude does awesome with those. He does. I'm trying to get one made for us. He hasn't responded yet. I'm going to tell him fuck off when he tells me his crazy number. $10,000, please. $10,000? <laughs> Bro. What are you talking about? That's way too much. Where's this... Uh, I know that I posted this. How come it's not up? What? I'm trying to find the... Uh, I posted about that fight between the two of them. Andrew and the suffering, the panic attack. I know you're trying to perpetuate that shit. Uh, the Kaunaki fight. I might have been a little more up there. No, that's Lopez. Uh, no, I guess not. Oh, I no, thought I posted it. it up. I do post a lot about Jesse Vargas. I seem to be a little obsessed with it. A lot obsessed with it, actually. I really want this to be a thing. I really want to find out that they're shacking up. I really want to find that out. I really want to know that. And I do post a lot about Jesse Vargas. I think I'd be jealous of her if she shacked up with Jesse. <laughs> she got to go to the room at night. <laughs> Why not me? What's wrong with me? All of this. Um, okay. Wow. And another Jesse Vargas post from me. Jeez. All right. Let's uh, end the show on this one then, Andrew, shall we? Let's end it on this. Uh, Adonis is out. He's done his first interview. Dude, that scar is massive. Yeah, it's not. Yeah. Bad wound for your, you know, when but you tell people. he sounds okay in the interview. He, uh, Never good looks, when you tell people you're a former fighter with that scar on your head. No, that's that's not a winning look. No, it's not. I'm glad he's doing but, good, though. I'm glad he's he's smiling. You know, it's dude. funny. Uh, at one of the last fights I was asked, one of yeah. the uh, promotions people was asking me about Adonis. Said he was, I thought he was out of the hospital. This is his first public interview. 
that scar is unreal, bro. Yeah. Unreal. No, it's a bad, bad look, but I'm glad he's up. He's got two of them. Look, they had to remove that whole side. I think that's a I think that's gonna do a horseshoe. And by the way, for anybody wondering, because I know there's no audio, he sounds fine. He sounds normal as hell. There's nothing yeah. slurred about his speech. Um, he seems to be normal. I don't I would imagine there's probably reciprocal things about bright lights and migraines and all kinds of crazy shit. But the fact that he's okay, this dude was near death. And, yep. and it just reminds us, this is a real sport, right? A shout out to everybody who does any combat sport at all or any pro sport. I don't care what you're into. I don't even care if you're into shitty ass karate. Somebody could catch you the wrong way, tweak your neck, something. Like when you get involved with anything that has contact, Andrew, it's legit. I hear you. It's legit. I'm just glad to see that this is uh, one of the happy endings. This is not a uh, Nigel Ben type situation. Did I get that right? No, McLennan. Gerald McLennan. Gerald McClellan, right. It was Ben who did it to him, right? Yeah, yeah. I saw that fight. I can even tell you where I was when I watched that fight because I thought it was a great fight until the outcome. I was still living with my parents at the time. Uh, I had squeezed a queen-size bed into my bedroom. I was planning on being one of those shitty people who stays with their parents for way too long. And I remember sitting on the bed watching that fight thinking, wow, what a fight. And then it turned out to be, wow, what a fight. That's when Don King said he quit like a dog. Oof, what a yeah. dick. Not a good look for I'm, Don. I'm really happy in this particular case. So uh, go over to Adonis's page, uh, whatever he's on, Instagram, Twitter, whatever social media. Send him some love. Send him some respect. It's great to see that he's back up and around. I hate to end the show on a positive note, so I won't, Andrew. Um, I'll end it on this. Gervonta Davis is back, and he's not fighting on a Floyd Mayweather uh, undercard. He'll be headlining for a change. July 27th at the Royal Farms Arena. Why am I telling you this? Because, number one, it'll be the only time you ever hear about the Royal Farms Arena ever. And the fact that we're still talking about Gervonta Davis and he's still fighting nobody. And he can keep calling people out until he's blue in the face and who he really wants to fight. But the truth is, the WBA super featherweight champion is bullshit. This dude is bullshit, bro. He's a bullshit. How is this still going? How is this still going? How is this Trevanta Davis thing still going? I mean, you could say happen? that... A and you could say that about a lot of these American fighters uh, who hide behind their he promoters. Mad levels of shit after his fight about who he was going to fight. Tevin Farmer. Yeah, should have been Tevin Farmer, Lomachenko. Right? Like, yeah. He wanted that cross-eyed motherfucker. I said it. Ay ay ay, that's <laughs> terrible. You want me to put up the photos? <laughs> no, I don't. Come on, we got to got to close it out soon. The camera. Right, what are you going to do? What are you going to do on a? You're it's married, kids. Okay. What are you yeah, gonna do? Gotta get out there. There's a newborn out there, dude, with two other babies. Look at those eyes, bro. Oh, see, I tried to help. That eye's keeping an eye on that eye, and that eye is <laughs> you're a dick. probably watching Tim Bradley. I don't. But none of these photos make him look good. You know what I asked? Stop! <laughs> stop, stop, bro. That's the dude from Saturday Night Live making no a shit. Movie. No hilarious. shit. Hilarious. That is fucking hilarious. <laughs> You're a fucking dick, Lee. <laughs> hey, did Gervonta Davis call me? Wait, let me see if I can do it. Hey, did Gervonta Davis call me out? <laughs> I'm not laughing. Right? At, no, I'm not laughing. at. No, that's not funny. Where's Gervonta? That hurts. That's your... You're going to hell for that. You're lucky you're an atheist because that puts you in the lake of fire, bro. <laughs> We just lost. We just lost people because you told them I was an atheist and that I'm a Chargers fan. Um, <laughs> lost all the Raider fans. I wore this on purpose to just drop off a few Raider fans. Ah, Raider fans. I'm gonna wear. I'm gonna wear an Angels jersey for the next show on Sunday. I'm gonna go through all my jerseys. I'm gonna just cycle them. I don't even all know right. if this is gonna play this. Year. All right, that'll do it. Go to fightnetradio.com. Check out our uh, t-shirt line. We'd love for you to buy one. Go get yourself a free cup, getfreecup.com. Uh, anything else, go to Facebook. Like, click, follow us on our page. 
like click Gennady Golovkin before. You want to know the funniest fact of what's going on right now on Facebook, Andrew? Other than I'm not at practice, which is funny that I'm just streaming practice. I'm streaming practice that I'm not at. <laughs> <laughs> I love doing that, by the way. And then liking it just so that I can get stuff from my coach going, how come you're not here with the kids and working with them? Because I'm lazy. The password is lazy, Andrew. Um, so for those of you who don't know this, you can follow Andy Ruiz on Facebook. Mm. And prior, this is the funny haha -ha fact about Andy Ruiz. Okay, He's still not verified. And his photo is still training with Freddie Roach, which I just love that photo. But two weeks ago, he had 10,000 followers. He had less followers than FightNet Radio did, okay? <laughs> now that he's won, it's up to 42,000. So what's that teach us, Andrew? You're gonna have to fight for the title to get us another 30,000 followers. <laughs> How can the heavyweight champion only have 42,000 followers? Yeah, no, I know. I was gonna just by the say way, that. I think that's everybody in El Centro, by the way. That's, that's pretty much <laughs> all thirty thousand of them. And that's and, the whole country of Mexico backing him, Lee. You know, because he represented two countries that day. Don't forget it. You go to his Instagram. You know what? That fuck. Go to his Instagram. I hope he has a million there. Because seriously, that is a pathetic number for him for his uh, it's Facebook. Not, and you're gonna be really sad about this, bro. Well, no. I am. And, and then we, we got to at least uh, come to agreement that is bullshit how he's saying that uh, he's representing two countries and he has under fucking 50,000 followers. And one of the countries idolizes this sport as it, as soccer, right? Is, is he's on up the to 876,000 followers. He's young. That's All good. Have... Yeah, that's good. That's good. I, like that. <laughs> I mean, it's not, it's not Anthony Joshua numbers. Anthony Joshua really, is like... Yeah. There's Anthony YouTube stars Joshua. that have that. <laughs> yeah, Anthony Joshua. By the way, he's not verified either. Anthony Joshua is. Yeah, he's got 9.3 million followers. Yeah. Oh, he is finally verified. Good for Andy. I mean, I'm happy for him. Come See, on. Andy Destroyer. What's it say, though? Go up. Go up. They need to take that off, bro. They need to take that off. It's so stupid. Where, the Andy Destroyer? 13? Can't you read it? As yes. part of the MS-13? He's going to get his face tattooed. He's the champion now. He's going to get the big MS-13 on his <laughs> He's face. holding the bull, the bulls, bulls, uh, the bulls, bulls. Damn it. Everything I like. I like Andy Ruiz. He's <laughs> no, fucking I do too. He's a good kid. He needs He's to He's squeezing the balls on the bull. <laughs> and did you see what they were both doing in 2012? No, what? In 2012, uh, Joshua was winning the gold medal in the Olympics. Andy Ruiz was tweeting out, chilling in the bathroom after taking a shit. Nice. <laughs> nice. I love this guy. I love everything about having a working class nincompoop as the heavyweight champion. He doesn't even know what the fuck he's saying. He is the Donald Trump of boxing. Like, he has no fucking clue to what he's saying. <laughs> that's the title of this show oh how did i miss this shit well i gotta save that photo don't i <laughs> Lee gets excited i am they found each other at the casino ay, ay, ay. oh my gosh this <sighs> is so great yeah you're damn right i'm gonna download and save this i'm sharing that bad boy right on our page That'll do it, Andrew. All right. I'm out That's of here, Lee. This week's show. Uh, I'm glad you guys enjoyed it. Go to fightnetradio.com. Sign up and follow. Thanks, everybody. We will be here on Sunday. Scroll down. Find a way to listen to the show on Sunday. We'll have a brand new show for you to listen to and review all of the events of Saturday night.